Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to review three sore running tops. First, I'm going to show a short video of me running around in them and look at the specifications. Then I'm going to review them. Finally, I'm going to see if I can recommend them. I made a video about sore running tops this time last year. And in the comments, Raj Kumar had asked me whether I was going to make one this year. Um, and I was thinking about it and then more questions came in about the upgraded tops and jackets that I couldn't answer. Uh, winter was rolling in, so I decided to get some of them and uh, make another video. And in this video, I'm going to try and see if the changes are substantial or incremental and whether they're desirable or essential. Last year, I made a short video nearby in the Shelly Banks and uh, new ideas are all very well, but you know, ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. So I did the same thing again. Um, and in this video, it's a very short video of just me running in them so you can see them in action. And uh, I'll read out a bit of what Sora say about them and list their specifications. Sora running say this about the tops. An ultra dependable wind and waterproof piece of kit, the winter gilet draws on the utility of the formidable all weather jacket, adopting the same high performance fabrics and construction in a more compact and versatile format. The Windbreaker 2.0 provides performance windproofing for blustery, chilly conditions. Made with a mid-weight stretch fabric that blocks out wind, this long sleeve top will keep you running through all but the worst weather. Thanks to an innovative stretch woven Italian fabric that features a durable water repellent DWR finish, applied twice for maximum adherence to the weave, the All Weather Jacket 3.0 offers unrivaled protection against rain and cold wind. Let's review the tops and see if what Sore Running says is true. I was asked in the last video in the comments how I ordered them in terms of comfort. Um, they're all really comfortable. I can't remember exactly what I answered. Um, but in this video, I thought, well, do I order them by cost, by the level of waterproofing? Instead, what I'm gonna do is order the, the, the quick review of them in terms of when I start to wear them when it gets colder. So in the first one, it's the winter gilet. Here it is. For the purposes of describing these various uh, tops, I've got my trusty friend Quinn to help out because he's going to do the, I'm going to point out things on the back using Quinn. Um, this is dark slate. It's also available in yellow. Uh, I wore it with, uh, I don't typically wear things under my sore tops um, because uh, I just love the feel against the skin and the windbreaker and the all-weather jacket. Um, this this uh, gilet is, is obviously different and uh, I wore the uh, Runderwear black top underneath it, which wasn't great for the video purposes. Now it's on a regular t-shirt. Um, but I bought it in a dark color and, and I, I'll talk, I've got other, I've got lots of water, waterproof jackets that ironically enough, even though everyone thinks it rains all the time in Dublin, uh, I, I don't, don't need to wear them very often. And, and the all weather jacket is one of my favorites. And if it's, if it's raining, I, I, I run in that. I'm probably not running in this in the rain. I might do for the odd time. Uh, typically as winter comes on, um, I, I don't wear a singlet very often. I do for the odd marathon race, but I, I, I feel strange running out in a, in a, in a singlet, even in, in when it's hot. Um, so I usually wear one of these t-shirts. Uh, when it gets a bit colder uh, towards winter, I'll wear arm sleeves. I've got some great sore arm sleeves and some other arm sleeves. I, I actually really like arm sleeves. I've got lots of them. Uh, so I wear the arm sleeves and then I put on a long sleeve t-shirt. Don't have many of those that I like. And then I start layering up with the various sore jackets. Um, but I bought this, <laughs> funnily enough, because I have, uh, have a waterproof sore uh, gilet as well. But I bought this one, or a more waterproof one, I suppose. Uh, but I actually bought this for traveling. <laughs> I, I, I get so frustrated. I mean, I know... Oh, we're probably not all traveling very much at the moment, but when you go to the airport and you, you want to get out the passport and all this, that's what I bought this for because um, it fits. Uh, here's the old trusty Irish passport, uh, which fits nicely in there. And here's the iPhone 12, this stupidly large phone uh, fits in there. There's also a pocket in the back. Now, because I have frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis, I have limited use of this arm. So I, it's, it's hard to get stuff at the back. So uh, Quinn is gonna demonstrate that. The other thing that uh, about the difference between this and, and the uh, all weather jacket apart from the sleeves is this flap on the outside on the gilet uh, is uh, on the outside of the zip and on the jacket it seems to be on the inside of the zip. I don't know why that is. I don't think it makes too much odds. The other big difference is the stretchy fabric at the back. You can see where I stick a light underneath it to show. And there's also a big stretchy pocket at the back. But again, uh, that would be only for stuff that I don't use very often, which would be the same with all of the sore products that I have. Here you can see the different material that's in the lower part of uh, the back of the gilet. And uh, I'm gonna go in now in a second at Quinn's back and uh, stick the iPhone 12 Pro Max in the pocket. 
the pocket is pretty big at the back, it easily fits the phone. Um, and then you can see that I come in with a light because uh, the back is very breathable. It's very breathable on the back of the Gilet and quite stretchy. So uh, that's uh, Quinn's task done. This is the Windbreaker 2.0. And this is Mercury, it's also a little bit in yellow. That's the previous version. Uh, it's a beautiful fit, I absolutely love it. There's uh, very nice detailing for reflectivity on the cuffs and also on the hem. Again, I'll show uh, Quinn, he's over there at the moment, but he'll be here uh, and we can look at the back. I, I can get an iPhone 12 in the back Pro Max, um, but it's a real squeeze. In fact, even operating the thing at the back, I find really difficult. So um, if I was gonna put anything in here, sometimes I might put keys. I don't actually like a phone in the back up there because it, it uh, bounces around a lot, but you could put keys or stuff, stuff that I wouldn't need to use very frequently on the run. Um, the big difference in this one, as uh, you'll see also in the all weather jacket, is the addition of a pull cord. The angle and, and the placement of where the, um, uh, pocket is is slightly different and uh, in this one here there's a there's, I didn't the sore lettering is big it's uh, uppercase and I uh, wasn't a great fan of it I typically prefer more demure stuff uh, and it's got smaller on the back of this one which again you, you'll see in the video of Quinn and you pull it tight um, there's a kind of strangeness I <laughs> Uh, I was asked uh, about, about it on, on, and one of the reasons why I bought the jacket was I couldn't, couldn't figure out, but it is really <laughs> it's a sort of complicated piece at the back. Essentially, you've got one pull cord. Uh, it's firmly fixed on this side, and then it pulls from this side, and then you can pull it out and clip it in to the thing. It's pretty hard to operate, and then there seems to be a plastic dongle on it that doesn't seem to do very much for me. Um, again, I'm not sure that it's it's not it's not a, an improvement I particularly want it, but but it's there, and I'll show uh, myself trying to demonstrate with uh, Quinn how it works. The pocket at the back of the Windbreaker 2.0 is much tighter, um, hence I put the phone in, and I can then take the phone out, and it's at a, an angle to the jacket that I find awkward to use, unless the jacket is actually off or on Quinn as it is in this case. And here I am tightening it by pulling the uh, pull strap and you can see the fabric gathering. This is the uh, All Weather Jacket 3.0. That's the 2.0. I love that orange shade. Um, I got some uh, black coloring on it about around the collar and the cuffs where I think I washed it at the right temperature, I think, but maybe I washed it with other things. I don't know, but some of the, the orange took on some of the darker color, which wasn't great, but wasn't too bad. I think it came with a type of uh, Granger's DWR to, to wash it in, but ultimately I, I wash everything at 30 degrees. Sometimes I add the DWR, sometimes I don't. I find the jacket quite water resistant. Uh, it's rare that it's so wet outside that it'd be too wet for that jacket. Very rare. I don't wear anything underneath it. Um, just like the Gilet, it'll fit the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, Quinn will demonstrate, I'll demonstrate with Quinn. The back, because um, again, it'll take all sorts of stuff in the back. But again, I like to, to run with it here. Um, it's not a jack, I mean, this is a serious running jacket and that's what I use it for. But I absolutely love this color. Um, as I said with the Gilet, the, the um, without doing too much of this, the lining behind is behind the zip on this. Uh, it's on top of the zip in the uh, Gilet. Don't know why that is. I don't think it makes too much odds. It certainly won't be bothering me. Uh, this also has now the main difference between this and that one is that you can tighten it at the back in unlike the uh, Windbreaker 3.0. Yeah, this one has, uh, no, the Windbreaker 2.0. Unlike the Windbreaker 2.0, this has uh, two pull straps at the back on either side. Um, so that's a, a slight difference. Again, I'm not too bothered in the slightest by by pulling the straps in at the waist. Um, one of the things in the Windbreaker, uh, the, the 2.0, is that it in the, in the earlier version, it was called Elite. Uh, now it's not, but I think SOAR are going away from calling things elite. Uh, I think they felt that it put people off buying them. I don't know, maybe <laughs> maybe old duffers like me thought that was a really attractive way. Uh, I, I don't know, that's what they're going away. The two jackets are essentially uh, very similar uh, in terms of construction, etc. This jacket, uh, one of the things I noticed is the the, uh, the sleeves and the cuffs are shorter, which is, is better. Um, other than that, I haven't seen too many changes between this and this, apart from the uh, pull cord. Uh, slight reprofiling inside some of the, in, in the windbreaker and in this of, of the, the flap. But ultimately, I, 
I, mean, I absolutely adore that. So uh, I love the color of this. So I don't think any changes were necessary at all. This is the rear view of the all weather jacket. You can see the horizontal pocket and I'm about to drop in my iPhone 12 Pro Max and then zip it up. It'll take quite a few things. I would usually only use it for keys. The um, pull cords are down either side uh, of the uh, jacket. So they're on both sides of the jacket rather only on one side in the Windbreaker 2.0. And then you can uh, clearly see that it easily fits the phone. Store make expensive products. There's no getting around that. Um, for me, they're worth it. I think, and um, particularly in the tops, they're, they're, they're worth it. Um, Brexit has meant additional duty if you're in the EU, and I know there's duty if you're in the United States, etc. and there's shipping. Uh, Soar try to do some things with their Miners Club and buying in bulk, and sometimes there's free shipping, not for EU, I've noticed, but never mind. Um, yeah, these are expensive products. The question is, are they worth it? The Winter Gilet costs 184 pounds, 218 euro and 95 cent, 240 US dollars or 340 Australian dollars. The Windbreaker 2.0 costs 138 pounds, 163 euro and 95 cent, 180 US dollars or 255 Australian dollars. The All Weather Jacket 3.0 costs 241 pounds, 286 euro and 95 cent, 315 US dollars or 446 Australian dollars. Check the prices regularly. I mean, I think they changed today on some of the markets. Uh, so yeah, this is a guide only. And of course, bulk and shipping and all that may have some effect on the actual price you pay. I think that's enough uh, costume changes for the day. <laughs> okay, it's not so bad today. It was freezing out on Saturday morning when I was trying to make the uh, video at dawn. I actually spent, I probably took an hour's worth of footage <laughs> and used about a minute. Anyway, never mind. Uh, it's done. Let's try and come to some conclusions. At the start of the video, I asked whether the upgrades were substantial or incremental. And uh, they're incremental. There's some small uh, incremental upgrades. And are they desirable or essential? Um, I'm not sure they're either, actually. <laughs> I mean, I thought the jackets were fine as they are, leaving aside the GLA, which is new. Um, I, I like the jackets. I, I'm not gonna be making any decisions on whether I'm picking the old version or new version based on whether I can tie it tighter around my waist. It, it's incremental, it's fine. It, it, uh, it doesn't do any harm. Um, Soar have a great uh, continuous improvement policy. I have to say I really like it. I also really like the fact that they, they put the version of each one they make on the liner of whatever it is, the jacket or the gilet. And that's really helpful for someone like me who's trying to refer to stuff. Um, may not be much use to anyone else, but it's of great use to me. Um, I, I, I don't have any interest in the waistband. Um, it's, 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 it, it, it has a zero effect on me. Um, I think it must be feedback from somebody, but not from me. The one thing I'd like on the all weather jack 3.0 is a watch port something to allow me to see the watch or watches uh, on either sleeve a little slit that you could just get the watch through um, because it is nice and tight around your wrist particularly if you use the uh, loops around the thumbs uh, but then you can't see the watch which for most runners is pretty essential should you buy these well it'll come as no surprise that my answer is going to be yes um, they're very expensive but they're well made and they should last. My All my sore stuff has lasted really well. Um, they make a, quite a range of things, but I personally think the tops, the jackets, are the pick of the bunch. Yeah, you'll have a large pain in your wallet, but you won't have any in the run. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the descriptions below, and I'll happily answer any questions that arise in the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.